Yo, what's going on guys? And of course, we got to talk about the New Orleans Pelicans season predictions. So before we start today's video, I want to hear your thoughts down below in the comment section. What is your season predictions for the New Orleans Pelicans? I really do think this team is a top six seed in the West. If they're healthy and everything goes right. And if Zion Williamson looks like he's about to be an MVP candidate. And that's my next prediction. I think this is the season that we find out if Zion is an MVP caliber player or not. I think this is the year that he either is the guy that we, we thought he is and he's an MVP player, or he is the guy that he has been where like he shows flashes, but he never really sustains that. I I think it's the former, which is that he's going to be an MVP guy. He looks incredible. He looks like he's got his stuff together. Brandon Ingram, I think also looks legit. I think the, the, the addition of DeJounte Murray is a great one. Dijon type Murray. <laughs> that like shot Shannon Sharp click. It's just funny. But let's get right into it and let's talk about this team. I think this team's got a, an interesting lineup. I think Murray and McCollum being the, the backcourt, I like that because then you have Jose Alvarado and Jordan Hawkins as the backups there. And then you have Pro Brandon Ingram as the wing, Zion as the power forward center. You got... I, I assume Daniel Tice to start the year, but I, I it looks like Yves Messi might be this year's Derek Lively. And if Derek, if Yves Messi can be like Derek Lively, maybe Yves, Yves Messi starts by the end of the year. I'm also a really big fan of Carlo Matikovic. Like, I'm not kidding. I think the guy's an athletic freak. They also got small ball big Jeremiah Robinson Earl. And then on a two-way, they have Trey Jameson. Now, for me, you then you got Trey Murphy and Herb Jones as probably your sixth and seventh mans. Jordan Hawkins as your, well, Jordan Hawkins and Jose Alvarado as your eighth and ninth guy in the rotation. So really your 10-man rotation is, like I said, Daniel Tyson is a star, Zion Williams and Brandon Ingram, season call him Murray. And then you have probably Trey Jones, I mean, Her, Trey Murphy, Herb Jones, Jose Alvarado, Jordan Hawkins as the nine guy, and then Yves Vesey as the 10 to round it out. Yes, I know. This is where I think my next prediction is there's going to be a trade. I think at some point there's two trades that could happen. If the center position, if the, the bench is good enough and they don't have any problems, which I think it can be, I really think there's two things that's going to happen. Either the bench, which I think the most likely thing is the bench is going to be good enough. Like the more I think about it, Herb Jones and Trey Murphy being your best player on off the off the bench a lot of teams would kill to have those two guys as their starters so having those two guys off your bench and then you have jordan hawkins in and jose alvarado as your eighth and ninth guy and you assume you'd be staggering Dejounte murray and cj mccollum so one stays on the floor while the other one goes off and probably the same thing with ingram and williamson you're set i ain't worried if i'm the the pelicans about my bench i'm on paper i look at the glaring hole is Eve's messy might not be ready and Daniel Tice isn't necessarily big enough to be a star. He's good. I think Daniel Tice is suited to be a backup center, not a starting center. And I think that's the most likely glaring hole. If that's not the reason they make a trade, the next reason that there's a trade is because their center position's actually perfectly fine. Eve's Messi is ready. Daniel Tice is good enough, and they end up flopping it. But what ends up happening is they don't have enough scoring off the bench or something like they don't have a true six man and they make a trade for a six man and i don't know who they would give up at that point regardless of if they did make a trade what salary are you it's just not make any sense it just does not make any sense so i'm i'm curious to hear your guys' thoughts, what would you guys do if you're a Pelicans fan and you're just trying to improve this roster and just make the team holistically better? Because I think this is going to be a team that's going to be a good defensive unit. I really think their their starting lineup is going to be one of the the better starting lineups in the league. And with that said, I think like you'll have a lot of fun watching it. But for me, I think that's one of the things that I really like. 
about it. And I'm, I think we're going to enjoy looking at it when you look at this team on paper is that this is going to be a team that is going to be exciting. They're going to pummel people. And basically, if you have Mr. DeJounte Murray and CJ McCollum, you know, be able to help run those second units and Trey Murphy and Herb Jones, if they are ready, then you're going to be able to go ahead and tell yourself, okay, this is a good thing. And like I said, on paper, when you look at this, the thing that this team is going to only be like, like bad at is potentially their war, their biggest flaw in my opinion, all, when you look on it, is rebounding the basketball. Are they going to be able to rebound? Will they be able to contain Nikola Jokic, Anthony Davis, Joel Embiid, DeMontis Sabonis, all these big old guys in the post? Will they be able to win the rebounding battle consistently so that it ends up not being their glaring flaw? If that's not, then the next question is, will Herb Jones... Trey Murphy and Jordan Hawkins be enough scoring off the bench so that when their stars do sit, they aren't just bleeding, you know, offense or like just being a black hole. I think that's the, the those are the two biggest glaring holes. And if they, those two things, like the whole thing is like, if the guys are right again, like I said, the fact that Jose Alvarado, Jordan Hawkins, Trey Murphy, and... And Herb Jones are your first four guys off the bench. Makes me actually quite confident that, guess what? That's not going to be a problem. Guess what? That's not going to be something that they should be concerned about. So, for me, I'm, I'm excited to see what they're going to do. How they're going to do it. And I think Willie Green is an underrated coach. I know he did lose some guys to Jordan Peterson and Charles Lee down in Charlotte. But yeah, I'm, I'm I I think Zion's really gonna take that step. I think Brandon Ingram being on the contract year wants to show that he is that guy. And that if those two are playing at the level that we all know they're capable of playing. Oh, baby. And then you have DeJounte Murray who's on one of the best deals, and CJ McCollum looks fantastic. So for me, I think they're in a great position to shock a lot of people and be better than what they're currently seeing. Like, again, worst case scenario, I see this team as a play-in team. But I think realistically, this team could really be like the the sixth seed, if not. Yeah, I think the sixth seed, it's hard to see them better than that. Maybe the fifth seed. It's really hard to see them being a top four seed, but... There's crazier things to say. Uh, that's basically it for me, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy today's video. Hit that like and subscribe button. If you guys did, that's... Yeah, that's it. I don't have much else to say. I'm I'm really curious to see what's your guys' opinions. I think it really just holds on to... Obviously, Zara and Brandon, but I have faith that they're going to be fine. And then it just comes out to, can they rebound the basketball? Will Eves Messi be good enough? Is Daniel Tice big enough? And then, is there enough scoring off the bench? If those questions are all answered, this team, again, I don't think they're like championship contention worthy, but like worthy for enough to, to make some noise. Bye.